Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This short presentation is entitled Back to Basics Practical Capacitor Charging Current by LT5 Demonstration. I'm showing here a situation that we face many times in power electronics, and that is we have a system here which has a bus capacitor, and then we have a voltage source. In this case, I'm showing a battery, and you have to connect the battery to this capacitor, which, are, of course, are at the beginning, uh, have no charge no voltage on them. Now if you connect it directly then you're going to have very high current that's very dangerous both for the semiconductors of the switches and also the capacitor in fact. So therefore usually one is using a pre-charge arrangement so that we have a switch here with a resistor in series so that the current is controlled. Uh, we charge here it is, we charge the capacitor until it reaches a certain value and of course we don't want to wait too long so we decide when to actually turn on S2 under a voltage difference, a small voltage difference between these two and then we of course turn off S1. Now I'm showing here a resistance and an inductance. This could be the inductance of the cable depending on the length of the cable, the opening here. Also it uh, actually includes the inductance of say the inner circuitry here, some of the capacitance and also in the battery on the source and the resistance is actually um, representing the cable plus uh, the internal resistance of the capacitor and the battery so this is the total resistance in the circuit and this is the total inductance. Now the intuitive feeling is that the current will be like uh, the voltage difference is divided by the resistance, okay? Delta V over delta R. Now this is incorrect when you have an inductance. Now obviously this is something you study, learn at the university or college, but then sometimes over some years perhaps this knowledge is not well remembered. So what I'm going to do here is actually to demonstrate what is really happening by LT spice simulation. Now the circuit we are talking about is, is an RLC circuit, that's what it is. And here is the typical response. However, usually the response is given in the terms of zeta or Q, the equality factor, which is the characteristic impedance over the resistance, etc. And it's not that intuitive to relate it to a certain circuit with given value, you have to do the translation. So again, anticipate give us the tool to really get a feeling of what, what is really happening. So to do that, I've set up a very simple LT5 schematics. This is the voltage difference at the time that the switch is turned on. This is the inductance, resistance, and this is the capacitance. And also I've added here an integral of the power loss on the resistor, which actually the power loss of the system, because these are reactive elements, they have no losses, okay? So the, all the losses actually uh, due to this resistance or is exhibited, I should say, by this resistance. And so that by taking the voltage times the current and doing the integral, this is the operator of LT spy for integration, I'm getting here actually the energy. Now I've chosen here value which were actually taken from a practical circuit, a commercial unit. We have a capacitance of 3 mini Farad, this is the, the input of the bus capacitance, approximately. We have the inductance, a typical for a cable, okay, 2.3 micro Henry, and a total resistance of 29 milliohm. This is the internal resistance ESR of the capacitor, the battery, as well, of course, as the cable, okay? So here it is for the nominal value. You see that we have here a current, a peak current of 95 amp. This is the energy loss. You see it's accumulating the energy and it comes up to be to about 38 millijoule. Okay, this is the peak current, this is this value here. So let's do some checks here to see where we are at. If this would have been a, and it is a resonant circuit, LC, then this is like half of a period of this uh, oscillation and it measured to be 300 microsecond. So half of a period 
of a resonant circuit is pi square root of LC and it comes to be to 261. So this is 300, 261. This is not surprising because we know that when you have a quality factor which is not very, very high, then there is a correction factor to this expression of square root of LC depending on Q on the quality factor. So this makes sense. I'm not going to write this equation because I like to leave everything in the uh, level of intuitive understanding of what is going on. On the other hand, charging a capacitor by a voltage entails power loss and we know that the power loss is C delta V square over 2 and this is without an inductor and this comes to be to 37.5 millijoule we have 38 so we see that for the 29 milliohm it really does matter although the current is going down but it extends for a longer period and then therefore the power loss is the same and we see it here we i'm comparing here now this uh, nominal case which we've seen earlier and here it is 95 amp and this is the power loss or the energy loss i should say and here is the case without inductance at all okay this is this one and it comes to be to 171 much higher than the 95 but you see that the power loss is, is not very much different okay between these two there's some simulation accuracy and resolution here but you see it, it's pretty close and indeed the peak current with the resistor will be like delta v over r which is 172 amp and this is what i'm getting with the simulation it's 171 there is some problem of a very short time here for the peak so maybe there is some resolution question but it's of course a uh, very good uh, agreement here so now i'm sweeping the inductance between very low inductance 0.1 q is very low so it's almost like without an inductance you see there is no oscillation here okay and the peak is very close to 170 so this is practically like the case of no inductance and then as the inductance goes up we start to see the oscillation the peak goes down and then of course the period goes up again the frequency goes down because of course l is increasing the inductance is increasing and the resonant frequency is being reduced and here it's sort of a summary of all this in terms of the peak as a function of the inductance and what we see here that here very small inductance very high current and then it goes down and here i am sweeping the resistance for a very low resistance one million you see that we are again getting very high currents but we have oscillations here and the larger the resistance the peak current of course goes down frequency is about the same because we have the same lc okay but you see that for a lower q the half of a period is really changing you see it here and this is what we have seen earlier this was this is approximately what we have seen with this nominal values earlier and this is just a summary of this case this is the peak as a function of the resistance so what is the conclusion here now strain inductance in capacitor charging circuit reduces the peak current there's no question about that so it's beneficial it's helping out to reduce the peak current which could be very dangerous for the semiconductor as i have said as well as for the capacitor now however as discussed in these two videos and these are the links to these videos and i'm going to put the links in the description section of the video that you are now watching well as discussed in these videos an inductance at the input of an inverter which is operating in closed loop may induce instability and the reason is that in a closed loop system when you, you look at the input you see a negative resistance why do you see a negative resistance because at a given operating point in a closed loop the voltage is fixed or the current and the, the load is fixed so therefore you have a fixed power so say if the 
input voltage is increasing, the current will be reduced to maintain the same power. So you have negative resistance, and negative resistance in a resonant circuit may invoke instability. This is discussed in these two videos, which I highly recommend to watch. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest. Thank you very much.